What's going on guys, Jeff Kogut here. I was doing another live. I wanna talk about something that uh, really I just ranted about on Instagram Live, but I figured that I record this right now on the Facebook Live, so there's some document, right? So, um, so I go to this on lunch, right? I go to this uh, noodle house called Saigon Noodle House. And boom, the news pops up and it's just like, oh yeah, Dow broke under 19,000, um, 20,000. And then they started talking about airline stocks, right? And how it went under. And I forgot about this, right? Because this weekend, they came out to actually put uh, uh, the people from like the uh, terrorist countries, hey, you can't hop on these uh, these planes. And uh, they put a block on it, right? So, so I saw that and I was just like, crap, man. He's all like, I know what's gonna fucking happen. This has happened before. Or the airline industry is gonna tank right or and or at least come down maybe like three four uh, four percent so if you can wedge yourself in and short the market you can make probably per per contract maybe make anywhere from a dollar two dollars a contract right but obviously commissions paid and stuff like that you have to buy a significant amount to make good chunks of money but um, I was just like okay it can you, we can make some money so so I was researching it to a point because on Saturday the see when I walk, came in from the office like at noon I saw that and instantly my brain went to that so I started researching and then I went to like Forest Lawn, right? And then on the drive there, I'm researching and I was telling my wife, I'm just like, man, watch. Someone's selling short on the airline. And then as I went into the Saigon Noodle House, I see that, I pop it up on my phone. And Delta went down 6% today and it obviously end of day. I think the market's gonna close in the next few minutes now. And uh, it's obviously hovering with a loss about 3%, right? So all the action usually happens in the morning AM. It always does, right? Um, so I was like, crap could have made some money you know anywhere from like two five hundred depending on how much uh, I would have bought in terms of contracts um, but there's a saying in trading which is uh, buy the rumor sell the sell the news okay in the world of stock trading but, hey they're gonna stop everything and all this chaos and stuff and the news came out and now and then it was all against right the, it was all favorable to you too right which is hit 20,000 that week right so everyone's feeling good and then this happens I'm just like yeah you know and then I was telling like uh, like my brother um, which I talked to like uh, I want to say like Saturday night like 12 o'clock and uh, we had we got into a conversation about 401ks and stuff like that and he has a good chunk of money in there and I was like dude how much are you contributing he was like man like 15% of my paycheck every single month right and so I was like damn okay and then he has a good you know chunk in there and then I told him I said dude man watch this week your assignment is is contact your HR and I said position yourself and move everything into fucking cash that's what I told them because if you get into cash then at least if they're once if it does decline then you have the ability to buy back because if you even lose and the next let's just say we have another uh, crash in the equities market then uh, if you have if you lose like 30 40 percent of that to make that up that's gonna take you another five six years versus hey staying in a cash position even if that crash happens in the next 12 months or 24 months or even 36 or 48 right at least you're a lot safer Okay, and especially if that happens in the equity market, most likely it's gonna trickle down to the real estate market, okay? Um, and you have at least the cash in there so you can leverage off that to be able to buy uh, different uh, assets using one asset class that, that's depreciated or went down and then buy another asset class, right? So that was a suggestion I've given him and he was just like, oh, that's smart, you know? And I hope he does it. And that's for anyone else and my, my recommendation too, if I can, is, is to do exactly that because um, it will happen. It's a correction will happen. It's just a matter of when, but you have to be positioned in that, right? So, um, so if you're a young buck and uh, you, you know you have something in there, especially even if you're older, right? Like if you have a 401k and stuff like that, understand how that thing works. And I would position it and actually sell off and get into cash. So if it does crash, you have the ability to be able to buy in with that cash that you have at a much cheaper price. Um, now, keep in mind, if you only started your 401k like in 2008 or something like that, right? Then with all means, then, then you, this play may not be the right thing for you, okay? May not be. Um, but if you already had it for a significant time, I would say, hey, lock those profits in at least via cash. And then from there, uh, as the, if the market starts, you know, turning, then buy back in at a certain price and dollar cost it back out. Um, that's kind of my recommendation that I have. And money is never, never uh, lost, you know, so because people hear this, right, with the stock market play, right? And they might say like, man, you had a loss. No, it just transferred to someone else, right? So clearly today, someone made a lot of money and then someone lost a lot of money because the volume is pretty damn high. So someone walked away with a big chunk of cash, but the money is never lost. It simply just transfers from one individual to someone else or one entity to someone else, okay? And then when you actually understand that concept that money is never lost or even technically made in my opinion, I always just say, hey, you know what? 
my brain says the simple economics of the world is, hey, on one side, you have people that uh, actually buy stuff, right? Products and services, whatever it is, you have buy stuff. And on the other side, you have what? people that actually sell products or services, right? And then this market is really simple, you know, hey, one side's gonna sell to the other, and then the other side is gonna give money back, right? Which is transferring money from one side to another, because this person had to actually get it from someone else, right? So you're transferring it. And my recommendation is to always be on this side, much as you can and then if you are typically you're gonna be well off than most of the people just only focused on this side okay so that's my simple logical thing on understanding economics but it's never lost simply transfers and today because I didn't pull the trigger or had the ability to pull because I was just like out of it this weekend money just slipped through your hands you know so um, and when I was doing this Facebook Live, someone says, man, don't make that mistake again. They said that, right? And my response was, no, nah, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna make that mistake again. You know, why is because I'm human and um, it's going to happen. You just have to be aware of it, right? So, um, because the challenge with anything that you do in terms of investing, if you've done stock before, right? And made money on an up market and stuff like that, right? Or even aggressive down market, if you know how to short it, right? You can make a lot of money. Is success is a really piss poor teacher. It doesn't teach you anything other than the fact that it gives you ego and gives Gives you confidence to keep on doing it which is the most dangerous thing that you can have when you actually physically lose money then you're just like ah okay and I and I actually have that happen uh, when I was trading is actually yeah cause I was in the commodities market and I was trading gold silver oil um, and I made a terrible terrible uh, trade with something called Tata Motors um, uh, Tata Motors at that time where I got into an actual block of trading stocks that I didn't understand other than the fact that you know at that time uh, Tata Motors was um, um, it was actually uh, what was it um one of the biggest uh, like Indian motor Indian you know company at that time right in the automotive industry and uh, they they were gonna buy out I believe it was Range Rover at that time right and I was looking at it, I was like oh yeah that's a great move you know and I like the car too so I got emotionally engaged in that and I bought a crap loads of freaking stock in there um, and um, and I didn't follow the core concept of buy the rumor sell the news right so I bought on the news when that was actually proposed and got executed versus I should have bought on the rumor and I should have sold off on the news and I would have walked away with the profit. Again, it's just one of those things where you make a mistake and that's when really, really, you know, hit home for me on the fact of buy the rumor, sell the news. It's so true, okay? And I'm a firm believer even in real estate as well, buy the rumor, sell the news, right? So if the, if the rumor is one direction, you know, hey, when the the data comes out start selling it and then this week last rant is um, I think we have a lot of uh, reporting coming out. I think we have the the unemployment coming out as well and we just had the GDP uh, stuff come out last week and I think we're at 1.98 percent growth on it that's the adjusted amount but I think we have tons and tons of reports coming out I believe this week so um, it's gonna be really interesting in just the equities market alone um, on what's gonna happen but you know that's my little rant for today. Um, if I come up with some other stuff, I'll definitely go on. So uh, let me know if you got any questions. Leave comments below. I got to go up and get back on uh, on the grind. So take care. Bye.